so once again welcome all and today's topic that we are going to understand is the torsion torsion of the circular torsion of the circular shaft right so this is the topic that we are going to see what are the conditions that will be there slowly slowly one by one we understand each and every aspects of the topic right so let's first understand what is shaft right if i tell you what is shaft let's understand so shaft are usually a cylindrical in section right so when we are talking about the shaft it is always in a cylindrical section cylindrical section ke according hum baat kar right the shape of the shaft is usually cylindrical section it is also defined in a case of solid or hollow section right cylindrical shape can be solid cylindrical shape can be hollow right uh, generally we see that the material of this shaft is either mild steel mild steel and copper alloys copper alloys so before the start of the torsion condition we just understand what is shaft so basically shaft is a cylindrical section either it is of the solid or hollow shape uh, the material of the shaft generally would uh, would be mild steel and copper alloys right the important thing here is the shaft with respect to the loading point of view we can see that we can see that the shaft may be shaft may be subjected may be subjected to the following to the following load right so we can see that what kind of loads shaft uh, shaft experience right so we can see that shaft uh, can experience the torsional load right torsional load and this is happened because of the torsion movement so we'll see what is the torsion movement but let's understand we define what are the load which is to be there so the first load we see that is the torsional load right the second one it is defined as your bending bending load right and likewise the third one it is defined as your axial load so these are the loads we have seen one by one which is individual talking about right the fourth one that is defined as the combination right you can say the combination of above three loads right so we can see that with respect to load torsions may experience torsional bending and and axial right but the most important thing is in actual practice we can see that the combination of above three loads are more significant and it is more uh, appropriate to any of the use right so this is some uh, condition so let's derive torsion equations right let's derive torsion equation right so before the start of the torsion equations let let define some of the assumptions right so what are the assumptions assumptions we can say assumptions to derive torsion equations right so let's see what are the assumptions 
first one the material of the shaft is uniform throughout right what is the assumption the materials of the shaft right is uniform that is the first assumption the second assumption is the shaft circular in section the shaft circular in section the means the means circular after loading always remember the shaft circular in sections remain circular after loading the shape should not change after loading third third assumption is the twist along the twist along the length of the shaft the twist along the length of the shaft twist along the length of the shaft is uniform is uniform throughout right and the last one that is important one the maximum what we say that the maximum shear stress the maximum shear stress induced in the shaft the maximum shear stress induced in the shaft due to application due to application of torque due to application of torque does not exceed its elastic limit it means what whatever the equation that we are going whatever the equation we are going to generate is valid up to elastic limit right so we have seen that that stress is directly proportional to the strain up to elastic limit right we have already seen likewise 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 we can say that the whatever the equation that we have been going we are going to generate is valid up to elastic limit and this follows hook's law right so the one thing that we have already we understood is ki jo bhi equation that generate hoke aayegi wo sirf up to elastic limit tak hi valid rahegi so that we can if we are going to remove the forces the torque the body should be get its original shape and size right so let's see i'm going to draw
This is defined as a radius. This triangle is the twist. This is the center. This is defined as O. Right. This one is the diameter of the shaft. You can say that's capital D. And there is a torque is acting on this face of this. Support this angle is phi, defined as the angle of twist. And this is defined as the length of the shaft. Right? Okay. You can see that. This is the fixed end. is the fixed end. So we can write it here it is as a fixed end. Right? Okay. So you can see that uh, a shaft is connected on the fixed end and on the free end there is a torque is acting out on the on the shaft. On the free end of the shaft. Right? So let, let's see what will happen in here in this case. So we have defined first that is T. What is T? That is the maximum. You can say what is the maximum twisting, maximum twisting torque. Right? That is defined as a T. T is defined as a diameter of a shaft, diameter of shaft. Right? IP. That is IP. You will see what is IP. IP is defined as a polar moment of inertia. IP is defined as polar. Polar moment of inertia. Right? Polar moment of inertia. Tau is defined as your shear shear stress and C is defined as modulus of rigidity, right? Modulus of rigidity. Theta is the angle, the angle of twist, the angle of twist. Be in radian, always remember. Right? And L is defined as the length of the shaft. This is L is defined as the length of the shaft. Right? So based on this condition, let us see. A fixed at fixed a shaft fixed at one end and torque being applied at the other end. Right? So suppose this is L point and this point, this point you can say is M, right? So this is the point is L, L here. And this is the point is M. And this is the point after talk applied, it become M dash, right? So you can see that when from M to M dash, there is an angle which is defined as a theta angle, right? Now, if a line LN is drawn on the shaft, it will be distorted to LM dash, right? As you have applied torque apply kiya, aapne kya dekha? Pehle LM distance tha. Ab after theta, it becomes LM dash, right? So we can see that the cross section will be twisted through an angle theta and surfaced by an angle phi. Matlab, is pe aapka theta angle aega, or is total surface pe jo angle aega, that is defined as your Five. Clear? So if we are going to write the kitna amount, how much amount of shear, always remember how much amount of shear strain develop hoga. So shear strain that is defined as the phi value, right? This phi is defined as the surface. The kitna amount of shear. So we can say that the jitna amount of this one. M M dash upon length of the shaft, right? 
बिकॉज चेंज कितना अमाउंट का डिफ्लेक्शन हुआ अपॉन ओरिजिनल लेंथ के रेस्पेक्ट में दैट कैन बी रिटेन ऑल्सो दैट शेयर स्ट्रेन शेयर स्ट्रेन कैन ऑल्सो बी डिफाइंड एज इन टर्म्स ऑफ टाउ बाय सिमिलरली जैसे आपका नॉर्मल uh, स्ट्रेन डेवलप होता था सिग्मा बाय एफ स्टाइल ई के रिस्पेक्ट Similarly, in terms of shear strain, this value is defined as phi is equals to tau by c. I mean, the shear stress upon modulus of rigidity. So it means what? This equation, first one, and this is the second one equation. If we are going to compare it with each other, therefore we can write it m m dash upon l is equals to tau by So to just see this condition, m m dash. If you want to see this m m dash, so basically, since m m dash, ये आपका distance है क्या? On the circular surface पे, तो ये circular distance आप कैसे calculate कर सकते हो? With respect to arc, so m m dash can also be written as r theta, right? M m dash can be written as r theta by l is equals to tau by Right? It means what? If you want to derive an expression with respect to tau, we can say that that is tau by r. This r can be written here. Tau by r is equal to c theta by l. So this is the first expression we have been generated with respect to this condition. Now, now we are going to see how much amount of torque is on this cross-sectional surface is to be there. Right? So let's see this one. So, based on this, I am going to first draw a circle. Right? Let's draw first. Ah, uh, just two minutes. Just two minutes. Yes. so this is this is basically okay so i have created in a solid circular shaft there is an element right this element is defined as this is the distance of x from the center this is defined as dx right and this one is defined as the diameter of the shaft that is capital d right so consider an elemental ring of thickness dx at a radius x and let the shear stress right 
So if we want to know how much, just on this elemental ring, on this elemental ring, we consider the shear stress, right? If we say the elemental ring have shear stress, that is tau x, right? So, आपको पता है कि tau x जो है आपका shear stress develop हुआ उस elemental ring में, ठीक है? तो अगर हम ये जानने की कोशिश करें कि what should be the turning force on the elemental ring, right? The turning turning force turning force on this elemental ring तो turning force होगा कितना shear stress into area तो आपका shear stress अगर tau x है उस particular ring में तो area कितना हो 2 pi x 2 pi x into dx right this should be the turning force likewise the turning moment due to this turning force अगर हम यहाँ पे इसी elemental ring में ये जानने की कोशिश करें कि what should be the turning moment, right? तो आपको पता है turning moment तो मतलब क्या हो turning force into radial distance. तो आपका turning force कितना हुआ dx into 2 pi x into dx. This is your turning force, right? Into x is defined as your turning moment. So you can see that ये ये जो turning moment है ये सिर्फ इस particular elemental ring में belong कर रहा है। तो अगर आपको calculate करना है कि पूरे shaft में कितना turning moment generate हुआ, तो that is that is you can write it in this way. That is dt is equals to tau x two pi two pi x square dx, right? So this is the value in elemental ring. So, agar aapko calculate karna hai, you can say 0 to r. From this point to this point, aapka kitna turning moment generate ho hai, you can define it in that way. That is 0 to r. So, we can write it, that is t is 0 to r tau x 2 pi x square d Right? So this is the expression. अब हम इसके basis पे हमको ये calculate करना पड़ेगा कितना amount of turning moment generate हो रहा है। अच्छा। Just tell me one thing. If I say, if I say, it is that is turning moment is a radial representation. तो अगर हम ये बोले कि torque that is the maximum torque is to be occur at a radial distance of r, right? Similarly, that is the torque x is to be representing at a radial distance of x. So, this means that if we have to know how much tx value is to be, so we can say that the torque at a radial distance x is equal to tau by r into x. Right? So, this is what tau, that is this tau is defined as a Read, uh, as a dis, uh, as a maximum value which is which occur at a distance of r so we can replace this t is 0 to r that is tau by r into x so ye x ki value yahan pe multiply ho jayegi aapko kya milegi 2 pi x cube dx which is also to be written as 2 pi tau by r 0 2 r x cube d x. So, जैसे ही आपने इसको integrate किया, what you will get 2 pi tau by r x to the power 4 by 4, right? Which is also to be written as tau by r 2 pi r to the power 4 by 4, right? So, let's see this this two. This can here it is defined as a two. So you can see that class that t can be written as tau by r into i p. Now what is i p? I p we have defined is a polar moment of inertia which is acting at this center perpendicular to the surface, right? 
so we have see that we have seen that i p is what it is a moment of inertia about this z axis z axis jo ki is circle ke perpendicular se pass hoke ja rahi hai right so it's in terms of radius it is to be defined as pi r to the 4 pi 2 which is also to be defined as pi d to the power 4 by 32 so you can see that you can see that tau p e by i p is also equals to tau by r right so this is one another expression we have generated so you can compare this equation with the previous one suppose this is the equation number 3 so you can see that tau by r is equal to c theta by l right similarly you can see that tau by r is also is equal to torque upon i p so your torsion equation is also to be defined as c theta by l so this is your complete torsional equation right the important point here in this torsion equation is this equation is valid this equation is valid up to elastic This equation is valid up to elastic. Okay. Uh, just we have seen in the bending case. Just we have seen in the bending case. Here you can see that I P and R both are a constant value, right? So this can be written as what? If you want to write it in that particular fashion, this torque can be written as tau. Into I P bar by R, right? If we consider P by I P is equal to tau by R, so you can see that I P is a constant value, R is a constant value, and this term, the ratio of I P upon R, is also known as polar modulus of the section, right? Which is defined as the polar modulus of the section. ठीक है तो ये वैल्यूज को आप क्या लिख सकते हो थर्स पी इज ऑल्सो टू बी रिटर्न एस टाउ इन टू जेड मेरे ख्याल से मॉडल सेक्शन सेक्शन मॉडल जेड हमने ऑलरेडी डिफाइन किया हुआ था नाउ जेड पी इज इन टर्म्स ऑफ पोलर मॉडल्स ऑफ द सेक्शन एंड अगे दैट जेड रिप्रेजेंट द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द शार्प ठीक है, so we can say that the, this is what this is uh, the polar modulus of the section is the measure of the strength of the shaft. You can also define it is a measure of the strength of the shaft in torsion, right? Class, is this is this clear to everyone? okay so we can see that we can see that we have number of ways to write this torsion equation right the first one that if you want to find the values of torque that it can be written as c by r upon i p right somewhere it is to be written as i p somewhere it is to be written as g the second second term that we are going to Right here is theta in terms of theta. The theta can be found with the help of T L by C into I. Likewise, the third term it is to be defined as a torque is also to be written as T theta into R by L. Right. So we have multiple ways to write these equations. Okay. Now, अब हमको यहाँ पे ये चीजें देखना है और सी दिस कंडीशन अगर हम यहाँ पे एक सर्कुलर पार्ट को ड्रॉ करते हैं तो हाउ दिस इज गोइंग टू बी देर सपोज हमने यहाँ पे एक मल्टीपल सेक्शन ऑफ सर्कुलर को ड्रॉ किया इसका क्या मतलब निकल के आ रहा है लेट एस सी दिस That 
So just see this condition, this expression, torque. Torque is defined as what? T into R by I. So if you have applied this torque in any body, then the stress that will be generated in the body, that stress value is directly proportional to radius. So as soon as the radius will increase, the value will increase. Increase right? This means if we want to see that this is the outer most fiber of this shaft. So here at this point, your stress value is maximum. And as soon as the value is downward direction, it will decrease in this particular fashion. So we can say that this is the value of stress right at different different section. Similarly, in the in this direction also. So this is the section at this particular point. Is that clear to everyone? So this is the representation of torque in this cross sectional circular, right? Now, just see, just we have already know that stress is independent of material properties. So we are going to write one by one the point which is relevant. That we, have, we know that stress is independent. Stress is independent of material. Stress is independent of, you can say, material property. So therefore, you can say that torque is also independent of material property, right? Now, this theta, theta is what theta is defined as T L by C I. Now always remember theta depends. Theta depends on material now theta depends on material property so this is the angle of twist if you have material change the so angle of twist of the same torque is also to be changed so now we are going to if we are going to understand this here so we will see that if you have a body in the act एक्सियल डायरेक्शन में फोर्स लगा है, ठीक है? तो डिफ्लेक्शंस की अगर हम बात करें तो डेल्टा, तो डेल्टा कैन बी रिटर्न एस टी एल बाय ए ई, राइट? सिमिलरली कोई एक बॉडी है जिसमें आपका सिर्फ मोमेंट जेनरेट कर रहा है, इस इस बॉडी में क्या है सिर्फ और सिर्फ मोमेंट की वैल्यूज को रिप्रेजेंट जा रही है डेट इस म तो इसमें जो थीटा वैल्यूज है डेट इस विच इस डिफाइन्ड एस म ल बाय ई आई राइट हमने स्लोप इसमें देखा था क्या म ल अपॉन ई आई कैलकुलेट किया था इन केस ऑफ मोमेंट लाइकवाइज इफ वी हैव अ शाफ विच एक्सपीरियंस टॉर्क राइट द शाफ इस एक्सपीरियंस then theta, that is angle of twist, is defined as T L by C I P. Now, why am I writing all the three? Just understand this one. That A E, that is a combination of A E represent axial rigidity. Axial rigidity. Right? That is axial rigidity. इसका मतलब क्या हुआ कि ये जितना वैल्यूज इंक्रीज करता जाएगा आपका डेल्टा मतलब चेंज इन डिफॉर्मेशन या डिफॉर्मेशन कहोगे तो वैल्यूज कम होती जाएगी तो ये वैल्यूज इंक्रीज होने का मतलब क्या है कि आपके बॉडी की स्ट्रेंथ को रिप्रेजेंट कर रहा है ना सिमिलरली ई आई ई आई इज डिफाइन एस फ्लेक्शुरल र Flexural rigidity, right? 
अकेल ये वैल्यूज आपका इंक्रीज करेगा तो आपका वैल्यूज थीटा यानी कि स्लोप कम होगा सिमिलरली सी आई पी इज डिफाइंड एज योर टॉर्शनल टॉर्शनल Is it clear to to you, everyone, how I am going to compare each and everything with respect to each other, right? Now let's see. Uh, everything, whatever we have defined or discussed till now, it is with respect to solid circular shaft, right? So we can see that let's let's define hollow condition. We can say that this is a hollow circular shaft. Hollow circular shaft. So in this case, we can see that the hollow circular shaft. Let us draw the circular shaft. It is hollow, right? कर रहे हैं तो वी कैन सी दैट दिस इज दिस इज द डायमीटर राइट एंड दिस वन इज द डायमीटर यू कैन से दैट कैपिटल ई दिस इज द आउटर सरफेस राइट तो यहां पे अगर हम ड्रॉ करते हैं द स्ट्रेस वेरिएशन तो स्ट्रेस वेरिएशन इज टू बी समथिंग लाइक That is the same as in the case of right. So here it is also to be defined in the opposite sections of the or the value of stress to be right. Up here, see tau max. We have applied torque, so tau max. The values kya hogi? That is to be defined as T by T by J into D by two. मतलब कि tau by R is equal to T by J into D by two. यही वैल्यू है ना तुम्हारी? ठीक है? So now here in this case, what is the values of J? So J मतलब I P, यानी कि polar moment of inertia, which can be defined as pi by thirty two d to the power four minus d to the power. So this is to be defined in a case of hollow circular section. right so as as we have already discussed the polar polar section modulus kya hai right we have already defined polar uh, section modulus so let's define in terms of the different shape so if we are going to write polar section modulus polar section modulus so it it should be defined as Tau is equals to t by you can say i p by r, right? So which is also to be defined as a t upon z p. See ratios को आपने z p define किया था. Therefore इसका मतलब अब यहाँ पे always remember always remember when we talking about the z p, right? So it is defined as i p upon R, अब ये R है क्या दैट इज द मैक्सिमम रेडियस जिस पे हम बात करेंगे क्लियर है तो इफ आई से फॉर सॉलिड सेक्शन फॉर सॉलिड सेक्शन ये वैल्यूज क्या रहेगा तो जेड पी कैन बी डिफाइंड एज अ फॉर सॉलिड सेक्शन के लिए आई पी इज डिफाइंड एज पाए बाय थर्टी टू डी टू दी पावर फोर अपॉन डी बाई टू दैट इज आर मैक्स इज डी बाई टू Which is again to be written as pi d two by sixteen. So it is always better if you remember these terms. That is for the solid circular section. Similarly, for hollow section. Similarly, for hollow circular section. Right. 
for hollow circular section the value of zp to that is defined as pi by 32 d to the power 4 minus d to the power 4 on d max matlab r max so r max yahan pe bhi aapka kya hai outer radius ko hi represent karega that is capital d by 2 which is again defined as pi by 16 Capital D to the power four minus small d to the power four, right? So we have defined that is torsional stiffness and stiffness, correct? In torsional stiffness, the value k t is defined as a t upon theta, which is also to be written as c upon i p into l. And similarly, in a uniaxial direction loading. Stiffness is defined as a load upon deformation, so that can be written as load upon deformation is also to be written as k t by l. Is it? So let's see one question. I'm going to write right. So class, let's see uh, how this question works. What 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 must be the length of a five mm diameter? Five mm. A diameter aluminium wire so that it can be twisted to one complete revolution without exceeding a shear stress of 42 mega newton per meter square, and uh, the value of C is given as 27 g newton per meter square. Right. So let's see this. Everything, uh, all the unit is in meter, so which I first convert everything in millimeter. So with respect to the solution part of this question, we can write it. The diameter is equals to 5 mm, right? Which is again to be written as 0.05 meter. Theta is one complete revolution. Here it is mentioned. It means what? The theta is 2 pi radian, right? Tau is already given is 42 mega newton per meter square. And the value of C is already given as 27 g n per meter square. You need to find the values of this length, right? So let's see this case. The torque transmitted by the wire. So how much the torque is transmitted by the wire can be defined as T is equal to tau pi by 16 d q, right? So when we are going to write this expression, the torque is already given. That is defined as a 42 into 10 to the power 6 because it is in mega newton into pi by 16 d q. That is 0.005 q, and this whole unit comes in newton meter, right? Uh, I believe the value of T should come is 1.031 newton meter when you solve this, right? Now the polar moment of inertia of a cross section that is I P, which you already know that is pi by 32, because it is of solid section, so this equation is minus pi by 32 divided by 4. So when you write pi by 30 t to the power 4, yeah, it is 0.0. 5 t to the power 4, which is again comes is 6.136 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter to the power 4. Yes. Now we know this relation. Yeah, that t upon i p is equal to c theta by l. You all you know all the values given in this t, c, theta, and i p. So you can find out this l, right? So once you solve this value L after putting all this term, you will get answer 10.096. Right? So this is the solution of this easy or simple question. So let's understand. Now I'm going to take when the shaft, when the shafts are connected in. Term that we are going to cover with the shafts in series, right? When the shafts in series. 
right? When the shafts in series, right? Uh, in order to form a composite shaft, sometimes two shafts are connected in series. The one by one are connected in. In such case, each shaft transmit the same torque, right? Each uh, shaft transmit the same torque. Uh, right. First, when each shaft transmit, when each we can say that when each shaft transmit the same torque, when each shaft transmit the same torque, the angle of twist, right? The angle of twist that is theta is the sum of the angle of twist of the two shaft of the two shaft. Of the two shafts connected, connected in series, right? So this can be written as अगर आपका एक shaft series में लगा है, so its total angle of twist is defined as twist angle of twist in individual shaft. So this can also be defined as other up before the theta in terms of theta. This can be written as T L1 upon T1 T1 I T1 plus T L T2 I T2. Right? Now you have seen that when the shafts are in the series, so the two shafts are in the same torque generates. ये आपने क्या देखा कि T and T here in this both the cases the same so we can define T को हम common ले सकते हैं और ये ले सकते हैं L1 by T1 I T1 plus L2 by C2 I T right right so this can be defined as आप इस तरह अगर हमने क्या बोला this is the theta if in case if we say that uh, the value of t that is the because t आपका जो है same material का है तो value same रहेगा तो t1 is equal to c2 then this equation theta is defined as t by c l1 upon i p1 plus l2 upon i p this equation is valid in a case of same material and this case is valid in a case of any material. Now, this in shaft in series. If you have shaft series, then how do you angle of twist? Calculate? You can see this. Similarly, when I say So now I'm going to write your sharp sharp in parallel. Right? So up the upka shaft parallel hai. Okay. So upka the angle of twist in both the shaft should be same. So upke pass do criteria. The upka shaft series may hai. So upka torque jo smack karraha in both the shaft is same. Right? Similarly, when shaft in parallel, so जो आपका angle of twist act कर रहा है in both the shift, in both the torque should be same, right? So here in this case we can say that the theta, the theta one is equal to theta two, right? So we can write this expression theta one. If I'm going to write theta one, that is t one l one upon t one i t one 
which is also equals to p to l to c to i p two, right? And and your total your total torque should be torque at each end, that is p one plus p two. Okay. अब हमने क्या बोला कि if the shaft are if the shaft are same material इसका मतलब क्या हुआ कि जब shaft का same material होगा the value of modulus of rigidity that is C1 and C2 is also the same so the equation is defined as D1 L1 by I P1 is equals to D2 L2 upon I P Is it clear to everyone? Uh, this is one of the question. I'm just going to read first question and then uh, we go to the solution. In this question, a solid steel shaft of six meter long is securely fixed at each end, right? A torque of one two five zero newton meter is applied to the shaft at a section of two point four meter from one end. What are the fixing torques set up at the end of the shaft? If diameter is forty meter millimeter, what are the maximum shear stress in the two portion? Calculate the angle of twist where the torque is applied. Right? The values of modulus of rigidity that is C is given as eighty four G newton per meter square. So in this question, let's start with the solution. You can see that there is a torque is acting at A section of 2.4 from the from one end. So, we suppose that okay, suppose we have taken the right hand side. The value of torque P is 2.4 meter. Say, your value is that is 1250, right? So, suppose this is a clockwise move, right? At this section of 2.4 meter. So, as you have given here a clockwise movement, so the opposite end should resist this movement. So, it will generate a Anti clockwise movement at the ends. This here, and it is also to be resisting movement at the ends, right? So suppose if I say this is the torque generated E one, and this is the torque generated. Now let's first understand. This is in a uh, uh, a torque is acting in between a shaft. Right at a distance of 2.4 meter. So it means that the angle, uh, you can say the angle of twist generated in the section of 3.6 and 2.4 is same. That means this is a case of shaft. This is a case of shaft in parallel condition. Right. So when I say the shaft in parallel condition, it means what? The theta one generated and theta two should be same, right? So here in this case, when I say theta one is equal to theta two is same, so we can also write p one l one c i p is equal to p two l two c i p, right? Now this diameter of this shaft is throughout same. It means what? And it is of the same material. It means what the value of C I P and C I P is cancelled out, and your equation is reduced into P one L one is equals to P two. That is the one first equation we have got from this. When the shaft in the parallel condition, the total torque should be that is T is equals to P one plus P two, and the torque of twelve fifteen newton meter is already given. That is the uh, summation of T one. Plus T two is twelve fifty newton, right? So from this expression, this is the equation number two. So we can define the value of T two. So here we can say that T two is also to be written as T one L one by L two, right? So if we put this value of T two in this expression, that is T one Plus, अब ये T2 की वैल्यूस क्या हो जाएगी? That is T1, L1 by L2, that is 
50. From this expression, we can obtain the value of T1. So, we have seen that T1 from this value is to be obtained precisely to be written as 749.8 Newton meter. Right? So, once the value of T1 is to be found, we put this value T1 in this expression number 2, we will get the value of T2. It means what? The T2, we can write that the value of T2 is again defined as 500.2. So we have calculated the torque at the fixed ends, right? So what are the fixing torques set up at the ends of the shaft that we have already calculated, right? Now the angle of twist, so angle of twist can be find out, this can be written as like we have already know the formula that is this one. With the help of this we can find out the value of theta. So that theta is defined as E1 L1 by CI, right? So when you put this value, what you will get, you will get a, a value of in terms of radian that is 0 0.0852 radian which is also which is also equals to 4.88 degree right now the last portion that you need to find out the maximum shear distance now just see this condition when we are talking about the torque when we are talking about the torque, uh, shear stress tau so tau is defined as T R by I, right? It means what? If the values of R and I P is constant, tau is directly proportional to torque. So whatever the value of torque, uske shear stress develop over. If I say the maximum shear stress, the maximum shear stress occur at a torque of 749. So we can define that the T1, tau1 is defined as, that is 16 T by pi D Q, right? That is already we have defined. So we can write that is 16 into 749.8 upon pi D is 0 0.042 into 10 to the power minus 6. So the value comes here is 59.66 mega newton per meter square so this is the value of maximum shear stress if you want to find out the t2 value so that is defined as a tau 16 t2 pi t cube right only thing is the values of t2 is to be changed so we have defined this value and when when you solve this value you will come that is 39.8 mega newton per meter so if the question asks you the maximum shear stress, then your answer would be maximum shear stress is 59.66 mega newton per meter 